Hello everyone and welcome to our online study for today. Most of us can probably remember several of our school instructors from years ago, but only rarely would we remember something that they said specifically to us. I have a vivid memory of a junior high school teacher who over 50 years ago in the classroom sought to teach her students two important concepts of life. On the bulletin board, she had placed two words which she sought to impress upon her students as two things essential for success in life. One of those words was initiative. The other word, perseverance. As life has gone on, I have come to appreciate the importance of both of these two qualities in life. They are both essential to the child of God. But the second is especially important as we go through these uncertain times. Peter includes it in his sevenfold list of the Christian virtues in 2 Peter chapter 1. He wrote to the Christians, Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence, in your faith supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence knowledge, and in your knowledge self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance. As we go through these uncertain times, we want to show how that our life of faith can help us as we go through these things. And we can certainly see how that perseverance has a role. Let's take for a moment, take a moment to think about the meaning of the word perseverance. It comes from the Greek, Greek word hupomene. And in the New American Standard Version, it is most often translated by the word perseverance, although it can also be translated by the word endurance in seven passages and steadfastness in three passages. Thayer, the lexicographer, says that, that, that perseverance is the characteristic of a man who is unswerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. Consequently, the King James Version translates uh, this word by the word patience, which might also be suitable if we think of it as the ability to endure or persevere in life's challenges. I would say that probably all of us at this point in our life feel like we could use a little extra patience or perseverance. Let's think about it for a few moments. Perseverance is needed as we go through life in many different ways, and the scripture brings this out. We first of all need perseverance in times of personal loss and grief and temptation and pain. Life has many trials, and it's important that we encounter them with perseverance. We get no exemption from these kinds of things because we're Christians. Instead, we're encouraged in the scripture to endure them or to persevere in them with an attitude of faith. James said in James 1 verse 12, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And so we are encouraged to endure or persevere as we go through the the losses of life, through times of grief, through times of temptation, and even through times of pain. We certainly need perseverance also in times of persecution and mistreatment. As a Christian, sometimes because of our faith, we may mis be mistreated by others or persecuted. The scripture makes it clear that this is the lot of those who live the life of faith. Paul expressed his joy in the endurance of the Thessalonians as they went through such a time. Paul said, We speak ourselves, speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. Later or earlier, he also, in, at least in terms of our New Testament, wrote the, uh, his letter to the Romans and spoke similarly. He urged them to rejoice in hope, to be persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. 
And Peter likewise acknowledges that relationships themselves can sometimes be a source of pain and difficulty. Paul addressed the slave, for example, who might have a very difficult master, but he urges him to submit with endurance. And he wrote, for what credit is there when you, you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience. But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. And so Peter encouraged those who are going under hardship in their work to endure those things with faith. We also see that perseverance is needed in hardship that is incident to teaching the gospel. Paul describes his experiences in seeking to teach the word and noted how that it was often with great difficulty. But he said in everything, commending ourselves as servants of God in much endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, in distresses. Paul would not allow the difficulties that came through opposition to cause him to quit teaching the word to others. And so endurance is needed as we try to share the message of the gospel with others. He encouraged the young Timothy to follow his example in this, writing to him in his final words before his death, But you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, and perseverance. And so we need perseverance as we try to share the message of the gospel with others. But finally, we just simply need perseverance in doing what is right. We not only need endurance in overcoming problems, but just continuing to do the right thing from day to day, living an obedient life. Sometimes we may become weary. We may become tired of, of the, the long time that we may spend in trying to do what is right. But we must persevere. And remember the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 8. The good soil is that soil that, that has perseverance. Jesus said the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. It is in persevering and doing what is right that we ultimately have the hope of God's reward. In fact, Paul says that at the judgment it will be those who by perseverance in doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality that God will grant the blessing of eternal life. And so perseverance is needed in our lives in many different ways, as we've just pointed out. So you may be wondering today, how can we develop this perseverance? There may be times, of course, when we wonder why God allows us to suffer hardship in life. And the answer is that our trials have a spiritual benefit to us. And so one of the ways that we're a, that motivate us to develop perseverance is recognition or understanding of the role of trials in our spiritual life. Our trials are a means to develop greater endurance. We, under, we develop or cultivate strength by resistance. We lift weights. We use resistance bands because it's only in that way that we can tax the, the strength of the muscles to enable them to, to become stronger. And so in the same way, Peter said, or James says, the testing of our faith produces endurance. And so we can endure and persevere in life if we recognize the benefit that comes to us by doing so that our trials have spiritual benefits. Our trials are a means to develop greater endurance. Our trials can be the means by which we may be disciplined to greater holiness. The Hebrew writer mentions how that as we struggle against persecution, for example, that this becomes a means by which we may learn discipline as if a father is disciplining a son and he reminds the Hebrews of this great fact that God loves his children and he disciplines those that he receives. And he goes on to say, it is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as sons, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline? 
We need not assume that every problem that we encounter is some kind of punishment for wrongdoing. But we can affirm as we go through life's trials that God allows us to experience difficulty in order to strengthen us in order that we might share his holiness, as the Hebrew writer said. Also, our trials will help develop our personal character. In our lesson last week, as we talked about some of the lessons that we can learn, some insights that we can gain from these uncertain times, we talked about how that these challenges that we face can serve a useful purpose in developing our character. Again, let's read from Romans chapter 5, 3 and 4. The Apostle Paul writes, And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. Enduring in tribulation, Paul says, brings growth to us. And all of us, of course, will have to admit, I think, that we have grown more when we've had to struggle against difficulty in life. And so one of the things that will help us to develop perseverance is to understand the role of these trials in our spiritual life and how that they can be beneficial to us. Instead of complaining or instead of becoming angry and turning away from God, recognize the benefits and blessings that those things may achieve in our spiritual life. Another thing that will help us to develop perseverance is to keep focusing on our ultimate goal of heaven. When we focus on God's promises of what we have in store, if we remain faithful to him, and then that certainly will enable us to endure life's trials and temptations. Paul wrote to the, or the Hebrew writer wrote in chapter 10, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. We endure because we have the hope of receiving God's reward. Paul wrote in Romans 8, But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. And so we need to have that goal in front of us and to press on toward the goal of being with the Lord in heaven. I still enjoy thinking about this uh, humorous statement made by the, the well-known preacher uh, Charles Spurgeon. He was trying to encourage people not to quit before reaching their destination. And he put it in a simple proverb. By perseverance, the snail reached the ark. One way that we are able to get perseverance then is by keeping our mind on the goal, not letting ourselves be distracted by the things around us, seeing that the reward of God will more than compensate for whatever trials and difficulty we face in this life. But another thing that can help us to achieve endurance or perseverance is prayer, by praying for strength to endure. The Apostle Paul acknowledged that he regularly prayed for the Lord's people throughout the Roman world, and in his letters we often see some of those beautiful prayers. I especially appreciate the one in Colossians chapter 1 where Paul said among other things he prayed that the Colossians might be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience. And so here we can see how that Paul considered perseverance or endurance or patience to be something that comes through prayer, through relying upon God and praying about it. And there will be times in our life when we're going through great trial that we'll have to simply bow our heads before the Father and say, Lord, I have so much on me. I need your help. I need your strength. Help me through the challenges of this particular time in my life. And the Lord will give you the, the perseverance to endure those things. And finally, I think it's important for us to develop perseverance by observing the faithful endurance of others in the Scripture. All throughout the Word of God, we can see, we can read the stories of people who went through tremendous trial in their lives, and yet they held fast to their faith 
and receive the reward that comes to those who endure. The Apostle Paul wanted to encourage the Romans in that way and reminded them of the scriptures and how that they could afford us examples of such perseverance. And so by observing the faithful endurance of others, he urged them, whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. As we turn to the word of God, as we read about his promises, as we read about his faithful people, then we certainly are, are better encouraged to endure whatever struggles we have to endure. The Hebrew writer in Hebrews chapter 11 described many of the great difficulties that people of faith had to endure in order to receive their reward. Sometimes they went through horrific circumstances, even having to give their lives for their faith. The Hebrew writer says, think of these as great a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us and encourage them to show a similar endurance as they run the race. Let's hear what he has to say. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witness surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us, fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, I admit to you that these are very, very difficult times that we face. And as time has gone on, we encounter people who have gone through great hardship. They have lost loved ones. They have maybe been sick themselves. They have lost their jobs. There's so many things that can happen during a time like this. And it takes great perseverance in order to deal with these uncertain times. But I have confidence that people of faith will be able to overcome these things. With the help of God, we can develop the strength and the perseverance to endure these times until they have passed away. With God's help, we can conquer our trials. We can live joyfully and peacefully amidst that which causes others to panic and maybe even to go to pieces. I hope today that you will let the things that we've said today influence your thinking and you'll be able to become a more patient and persevering person as a result of your faith in the Lord. We hope the Lord will bless you. We continue to pray for you that he will keep you safe. We look forward to the time when God's people will be able to gather together again. We hope it will not be too long. But we're grateful for the opportunity that we have to be able to share messages by means of the Internet, something that in other generations was not possible. At least in this way, we can stay connected, we can share God's Word together, and Lord willing, before too long, we'll be, get, we'll be meeting together again. May the Lord bless you and keep you until that time. And we thank you for listening to us in our lesson today.